Good evening, lovely tubers. White Mexican back again for another Market Watch investments video for you guys tonight. I have a plethora of cards I'm going to be showcasing for you guys tonight. These are going to be my personal selections, and I do hope that you enjoy. Getting things kickstarted this evening is going to be Dark Necrofear. I can't get over this card. This card has amazing artwork. It's a very, very old Generation 1 card, a lot of nostalgia to it. It was a Bakura card in the anime, which brings a lot of credibility to the card for popularity. And there's just some really, really great prints of this card. Number one, obviously, being the original OG print as an ultra rare, dining out of very nostalgic Generation 1 Labyrinth of Nightmare. So we're going to go ahead and look at some price points here. We're looking at near mint, lightly played, and first editions exclusively, of course, because this is going to be for collector purposes. Starting market price is going to be about 83 bones for lightly played first edition. Continues to trickle up here as we move on through TCGP platform. And the first near mint first edition that we're going to see here is going to be a phantom under 300 bones for about 290. And then there's two pages of availability. If we switch over to three stacks for first editions, there is not a single stack available here for first editions in lightly played near mint. So um, that's interesting. Second is going to be, in my personal opinion, uh, is going to be the dual terminal two rare. Dual terminal is a very safe to assume a very fanboy favorite rarity very very aesthetically pleasing in my personal opinion and uh, dual terminal 2 had kind of this like birthday cake sprinkle polka dot looking rarity for the foiling which is really cool and this is going to be roughly around 3-ish bones and you factor in shipping we're going to go ahead and switch over to 3 stacks to see what the bulk prices are and it is still roughly around 3 bones for a lightly played 5 stack that moves to about four for a six stack for near mint. Not really a lot of availability on this one. There used to be just like a, an abundance, a mass and abundance of this card for bulk pricing. You can see it's starting to trickle down. Dual terminal is very much discontinued now. And this is just a really, really great rarity. This card used to be significantly more affordable too. I remember several years ago, about probably three-ish, two years ago, I was picking these up left and right for under a bone a piece. Next is going to be the Master Collections Volume 1 variant of this. This is the only secret rare, secret rare print variant that we have this. It's also a uh, promo, which is really cool. We can see the limited edition stamp here. Aesthetically, this looks super, super great. And promos, like Gen 1 promos, have been going up like crazy of late. Things are just getting more and more difficult to acquire. I'm not sure why this is not letting me. Is there no near mints available? It's not letting me do... Um, near me lightly played I'm not sure what's going on here sorry about this guys all right so I don't know it's not letting me select near mint so I don't know if TCG is bugging out or what but so we're gonna be looking at lightly plates for this and it looks like right off the bat there's a fat 13 stack here for roughly two bones let's go ahead and switch that over really quick and then there's another stack of five here for about a bone but then there's this sneakily not very tactically hidden five five bone shipping here um, another really great choice again the, the artwork is really great again this this photo does not do it justice uh, this card looks amazing unfortunately TCG player just kind of has a crap photo here on here but so ideally first edition ultras or OG prints DT2s and then the secret rare promos everything else is kind of lackluster to me I mean personal preference if you guys like other versions that's pretty cool but it's an all-around really really great collector's card and it's got really really great artwork Next is going to be Structure Deck Cyber Strike. So apparently Konami is dropping this in October, between 13 and 15 October. It's going to be 10 bone standard market price per box. So I'm a huge avid fan of collecting in bulk for these products. Pre-releasing going in, usually my platform is eBay or Amazon, mostly eBay. And you buy these in bulk stacks of cases. I believe the cases come in with eight Structure Decks. And you can get them for a little bit more affordable, get a little discount for even less than 10, 10 bones a box. And I think this is a really, really critical structure deck. I'm not really sure for playability purposes or for competitive-wise, but this is very much a Cyber Dragon player support. 
I know it's got the Cyber Dark stuff too, but it has Cyber Dragon stuff too, and Cyber Dragons is a huge fanboy favorite deck. It's very, very nostalgic. It's been going through several different generations of the game, and this is just a really, really big deal. There is... Um, this is this is going to be a structure deck that you want to get personally. I'm going in. I'm going to pre-release and I'm going to buy in bulk a couple cases of these and just keep them sealed. First edition is exclusively sealed, and you just hold them. Naturally, statistically over time, it doesn't matter what structure deck you get. It can be like the crappiest structure deck in the world. But once it hits about the year mark, it starts to slowly trickle up after that ten above that ten bone market price for sealed first editions exclusively. So, um. This is an incredible investment. I'm very, very excited about this investment. I believe very heavily in this investment, and I'm really, really excited. And it's got some pretty, uh, pretty good hollow, hollow rare um, counts here. Five ultra rares and three super rares. That's um, pretty sure that's pretty, um, pretty a lot more than than, than normal that I, from what I can remember. I thought it was only two either two supers and two ultras or at least the standard ones used to be two supers and two ultras way back in the day for generation ones but anyway i think this is a really really great investment so even if it doesn't see competitive play specifically with this engine again it's going to have that cyber dragon support cyber dragon name behind it and it's going to hold great valuable and collectability purposes in the future it's a long haul investment right there Next is going to be Card Card D. This is going to be the original Galactic Overlord Secret Rare Print. This card used to be really popular back in the day. When I think of this set, I mostly just think of Rescue Rabbit, which is another amazing, aesthetically pleasing, just a great Secret Rare. I really, really love the first edition OG prints. But this was also another really popular card back in the day, and that just reminded me like Hot Wheels or something. Um... But this card uh, is is pretty cool. You know, it's a secret rare back in the day. Uh, secret rare was still up there, and you know, it's still high rarity here. So we're gonna be looking at a near mint first edition, slightly played. They're gonna be roughly around 11 bones here, starting market price for the single stacks for lightly played, and then near mint is gonna be roughly around 14 bones for a two stack. If we switch over to stack bulk prices, it goes up to 14 bones for first edition near mints for a three stack. And there's one page of availability. Next thing I want to talk about is going to be some of the Game Boy game promos. Now, I know there's also promos for, like, PlayStation and some of the other platforms for video games, but what I remember as a kid going through, like, the Gen 1 era was mostly the Game Boy games. The Game Boy games were really, really fun. It was one of our first kind of highlights for playing, uh, dueling electronically and going on a kind of a digital platform before all these other... Um, high-tech systems, you know, like Dev Pro and like um, Dueling Book and all this other stuff. So it was really, really cool time. It was kind of a first of for us back then in the early 2000s. And there was um, promo cards that got released, three promo cards pretty much per game for the most part. And the majority of them came in Prismatic Secret Rare. And, and back in this early era of the game, it was the only way that we in the TCG could get this very aesthetically amazing, deep embedded prismatic secret rare uh, foiling. We didn't get this until I think it was the World Superstarters was the uh, first set that donned an actual subset that had the uh, prismatic secret rare, which was really, really kind of a game changer. It was definitely a transition set for us. So um, you can see here amongst, there's just like many plethoras throughout the years, early 2000s that were released on this platform specifically for advance. And it got some pretty cool titles and artwork and stuff. Um, one in particular was Destiny Board Traveler promo. And this one actually did not don Prismatic Secret Rares. They were actually super rares, we can see here, and we have DD Assailant. This is definitely the more popular one out of the three. Uh, this artwork is really, really cool. Not quite... Well, I mean, it, it, it's pretty much the same effect, if I remember, if I can remember my Generation 1 effects. It's pretty much the same uh, effect. It just uh, has a 200 attack more and it's got really, really cool artwork. So um, there's a, a two hollow hollow foil variants of this, this being the super, and there's another secret that I'm about to get into. So really quick, um, we're going to go ahead and look at this near mint and lightly played. It's about nine-ish bones starting market price for lightly played. And then if you want near mint, it goes to 10 bones. There's seven pages of availability. And we're going to switch to stacks and then it jumps up to about eight plus a dollar of shipping here. And then 10 plus this 3, and so on and so forth. So really not a lot of availability. Uh, again, not a very competitive card by any means. Very, very washed out uh, generationally. But very, very, very great artwork. 
All right, so moving on, that was the super rare from the game promo. And of course, there is the Dark Revelations Volume 4. Now, keep in mind, Dark Revelations, I think Volume 4 was the last issue, I'm pretty sure. And uh, Dark Dark Revelation, Dark Beginnings are known for their ultras and supers. There wasn't really a whole lot of secret rare action for these sets. This fortunately happened to come out in the final set. And it was donned as a secret rare print. You can see it's a very, you know, this isn't the best picture, but a very, you know, aesthetically pleasing card here. And, you know, these cards are just ridiculous for, uh, for market value. So we're going to go ahead and switch some of the settings here. Sorry, market price for even a lightly played is going to be a half a grand for 501. And then if you want a near mint, it's going to quickly go up to 681. So incredible market price. Again, keep in mind this is Dark Revelation, so there was no first edition copies produced. Um, some insane value in that, though. Next is going to be another Generation 1 card, Change of Heart. This has amazing artwork. I love the artwork in this. Excuse me. And there's a lot of really great prints of this. Of course, uh, hat goes off to the original Generation 1 Magic Stamp. See, this is this is pretty crisp. This is cut off, and for some reason, this Ultra Pro sleeve sticker is up here. It's kind of tripping me out. But uh, this is a very clean photo. You can see very descriptively the artwork, the demon and the angel side, you know, the heaven and hell and the heart and just the facial expression and just it's it's a very very creative and very very nice uh, one of the the first uh, really cool magic cards we ever had in the game metal raider was the second set that we ever got ever so really great stuff and this is going to be the original print as an ultra rare we're going to be looking at first editions exclusively and let's go ahead and change the settings here to near mint lightly played First lightly played is going to be roughly around 30 bones, but that is uh, unfortunately per Portuguese, and then a Spanish one here for 75. It looks like the first U.S. English is going to be about 150 for lightly played, and then if you want near mint, we're going all the way past the half grand mark of almost a phantom under uh, 600 bones here for near mint first edition. Let's see if there's any stacks available. There is a single stack available lightly played first edition for 200 bones a piece. So all around just an amazing collector's card, uh, some amazing rarities. More specifically, for the Legendary Collections 3, which John a secret rare print again, like pretty much all the crispiness of all the original artwork, just updated hollow foil of secret rare foiling. Of course, uh, unfortunately, they changed this to spell card, which you know had to distinguish from the Gen 1s to the reprints. We're going to be looking at first editions exclusively, and I'm not sure why it is uh, not letting me pick the conditioning here. All right, so by far this is definitely going to be my second choice, um, right up there with the first edition originals. And star market price for a first edition I played single sack is going to be roughly around 26 bones. And we're going to go ahead and switch over to stacks. First stacks is going to be 26 bones for lightly played first edition. And then near mints are going to go to about 28. Only three pages or three listings available for that. Moving on is going to be Box of Friends. So it's kind of an interesting card. This used to be a solo print for the longest time. And then the calendar, Advent Calendar 2018, Donna Super Rare, which no one cares about because. The original print is the original print, and it's a higher rarity of Secret Rare. The artwork is mostly what I'm interested in this card. I'm not saying that this card's going to be super competitive or anything. It's just very, very affordable right now, and has been affordable for quite some time. And I just really like the artwork. I love how, like, Number Hunters was a really obscure set, and every once in a while, like, it just really pulls one out of the pocket, and there's a uh, Number Hunters card, XYZ specifically, that, that goes up in value, which is pretty interesting history merit about this set. But I just normally like this because it is a secret rare. It used to be a solo print, and it's got just, I don't know, it's got snazzy artwork. Um, and you can see here, I mean, stacks are a bone. Near Mint First Edition is a five stack for a bone. Another uh, four stack here for two bones. The kind trickles on after that. Two pages availability for stacks. So I just, uh, I really like this card. I don't really have an explanation. That's kind of all as far as it goes for that. 
All right, next is going to be Thunder Dragon Colossus. So this is going to be the original Soul Fusion First Edition, uh, First Edition Secrets, original prints. And uh, I know there's an Ultimate Rare, OTS Ultimate Rare, which looks very, very nice as well. Personally, I do prefer the original print First Editions. Um, big fanboy of Secret Rare. Ultimate Rare looks good too. It's just uh, in price comparison, I'd much rather take the uh, the price tag of the original First Edition Secrets being the OG prints as opposed to the Ultimate Rares personally. But Thunder Dragons is a really, really fun deck. It was a powerhouse deck that didn't last very long. Banlist torn this up pretty bad. And the shift in the meta games, but this has an amazing name, amazing artwork, secret rare, of course. Soul Fusion was a really, really fun set, really fun time in the game. And fusions in general, like it's just, it's just an amazing fusion. One of by far one, one of my favorite fusions in, in the game currently. So we're gonna be going ahead and looking at some market price prices for this. It's gonna be about twenty bones. There's a four stack for near mint first edition, so that's actually pretty incredible. Uh, for the longest time. My my safe number for this was 10 bones. I always tried to pick these up, you know, lightly played or better first editions specifically for the original prints for 10 bones. Unfortunately, those days are kind of over, fortunately, unfortunately. But um, we never know what the future holds for us, so we're going to go ahead and switch over to some stacks, check some bulk pricing. Uh, again, that first edition you're meant for holding it down for 20, and then there's a couple other stacks here. So, really, really great time. Time will tell. This card will definitely. I'm a fond believer that everything gets released off the ban list eventually it's just a matter of konami decides to errat it or not so time will tell on that next is going to be guard penalty this is the ultimate rarity original print out of enemy and enemy of justice a really really great uh old set here mostly just like the artwork on this this isn't really a, a good card for playability purposes you know it's got the duality of being a quick play which is pretty cool I like how it's just an old school ultimate rare and again you can't really see because it's a really you pixelated picture but the artwork's really really cool it's basically these two boxers and there's uh one is like holding the other one and the other one looks like he's about to sock him in his face and he's like all scared and it just it, it's pretty it's really cool i don't know i just i like obscure artwork and cards sometimes and you know this being an old ultimate rare it's pretty schnazzy so we're gonna look at first editions uh there apparently is only two listings of first editions for the ultimate rare variants and uh, lightly played is going to be about five bones plus a bone shipping for a four stack, and then it goes straight to ten bones for near mint first editions for a three stack. So, pretty incredible on that. Or I guess I. Okay, so there's more for uh, for, for non stacks here. So for non stacks, it's about three bones uh, for a plus about a bone shipping for lightly played, and. Um, yeah, pretty much so on and so forth after that. Three pages of availability. Really, really cool artwork. All right, next is going to be Judgment Dragon, the infamous white dragon here. Light Sworn is really awesome. So Phantom Darkness and Light Destruction, some of my all-time favorite sets of that kind of middle, middle, uh, middle era sets of the game. Uh, of course, there's, um, I think it was Turbo Pack. Uh, donned an ultimate rare, which is really great as well. Personally, I'd much rather have original Light Destruction first edition secrets because they're the original prints and the secret rare foiling is just very deep and predominant and just pops beautifully in this card. So, of course, we're going to be looking at first editions exclusively. And any secret rare variant of this first edition is worth like incredible money here. I mean, there's a damaged one here, German European for 80 bones plus heavily played. You can see it's just it's a it's a very popular card and it's a very hard card to obtain it doesn't look like there is even near mint first editions available on this platform anymore so lightly played is going to be 170 bones for a single stack and just continues to trickle up after that and again it's just very interesting now now there is no near mints on uh, the tcg platform so alternatively this is ridiculously expensive obviously this is just for collectability purposes and then if you go you know got the ultimate hair anywhere between 300 and 3 360 but for playability purposes for what it is for affordability i love the Dula saga variant Dula saga was you know it's unique on its own merit alone it, it's the only set in the tcg currently to have like this kind of special ultra rare foiling it it's not too crazy it's just kind of like this laser beam looking thing and I personally, you guys know my feelings, I'm, I'm utterly um, disgusted with all ultra rares, but I'm cool with, with Dula Saga. Dula Saga, mostly just because it's 
its uh, its unique merit and kind of how it stands alone on its uh, unique uniqueness of its rarity. And these are roughly around three bones, pretty much all across the board. Switch over to stacks. An Italian one for about two. Uh, 14 sack is pretty cool actually you know two bones versus metallion ones this is actually really nice I really do like European foreign foreign European cards only two bones a pop for these first assurance this is really nice too here's some more Italian ones there's a lot of Italians a lot of Italian ones first three listings are Italian ones um, this is kind of gets a little interesting but for the two bones this is actually this is really cool I actually really really like this a lot I want to take a look at this really quick I'm gonna kind of go down the rabbit hole I've never actually seen an Italian one that's pretty cool. Anyway, so uh, Judgment Dragon. Next is going to be Raiko. This is going to be the original Super Rares, of course, Light of Destruction. We're going to be looking at the first editions exclusively. I've augmented all the settings here for the way I want it. For stacks, uh, for stacks is going to be 20 bones lightly played, and then 25 for near mint first editions for a 15 stack. If we take off the stacks, we can get our first first edition a two stack here for 9 bones. And then three pages of availability on that. This is a really great card. This is really the only rarity I like. There is a Starfoil first edition from Epic, Epic Dawn. I mean, those are those are pretty cool. Those are kind of like an augmented version of DT. So really, this and the original first editions are would really going to be the only ones that I would personally go after. Maybe if you're really desperate, the Gold Series Pyramids Edition um, variants. Um, these came out very dark though, so I will kind of stick with the original first and the first edition star foils. Next is going to be Wolf, original super rare live destruction variants, starting market price. This is going to be for stacks, is going to be roughly around 9 bones with a bone of shipping, and then 10 bones here for near mint. If we take off the stacks, we're going to get uh, one stack here, lightly played for about 8, and then a near mint here for about nine bones and then there's two pages of availability and this by far I think is the best variant of this being the original there is higher variants with the ultra rares um, I really did not like the, how the ultra rares came out in Light's Revenge. Light's Zen Revenge was has really great history merit it was a transition set because they updated the the level stars and then monster attributes and magic and trap and all that which is really cool great transition history merit on this set this is a very very unique and special set so for certain cards I would really look out for those uh, first edition prints exclusively um, and then uh, raw yellow and legendary collection 2 these ran parallel just like legendary collection 3 and 4 some of the same cards and the same rarities these are really great personally go for legendary collection 2 because it was a couple steps um, older than raw yellow by a couple months or so um, but by far, I definitely think, um, even though it's more expensive, the first edition supers are the way to go. Next is going to be Lila, Light of Destruction, Original Print, Ultimate Rares. Um, this card does look very, very gorgeous. Again, this picture is very, very dark. It's not quite as dark up, up close and personal, but really great. And there's been a, a very interesting um, price inflection on this one. You can see starting market price for stacks here is going to be uh, lightly played first edition is 105 bones a piece and then it goes to 125 for near mint a piece we're going to take off stacks and we're going to go ahead and change these over lightly played first edition is going to be 99 bones for a two stack and then if you want near mint it's going to go to 125 uh, there's two pages available. Really awesome. So, like, just like Breaker the Magic Magical Warrior, this was an MST on legs, and uh, really great artwork. Again, I just you know, and Light Swarms is a really fanboy favorite deck. An amazing engine, very very splashable. You can mix it in with a lot of different decks. Next is gonna be Lila. So Lila is interesting because unfortunately the original print out of Light of Destruction was just a rare, which is really basic, and I really feel like a lot of people were not a big fan of that. There was, of course, the Champion Packs 8 Super Rares, which are just ungodly expensive, only 9 listings here. You know, of course, Champion's Pack. But I think the healthiest alternative would, again, be the Legendary Collections 2 first, and then the Raw Yellow 2nd for the first editions. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. And these actually look really great. You know, I'm not a fan by any means of Ultra Rare, but this this set, Raw Yellow and Legendary Collection 2, their Ultras actually came out really, really good, I think, personally, in my opinion. 
so I think for the money this would be the best variant to go after and these are only two bones and then jump to about three let's go ahead and look at bolt pricing there is one bolt pricing for just the stack for about roughly two bones when you factor in shipping a piece so there's Lila next is gonna be Shadal Showdown so again I'm a huge adamant fan of investing early and in, in bulk for first edition sealed structure decks and by far this this I mean I am a little biased I am a really big Shadal uh, fanboy I love Shadal's another very splashable uh, engine core but there's a lot of popularity behind these um, one this is a relatively easier deck to play uh, more simpler combos if I'm so bold to say uh, big fanboy a bit base behind this I mean you know there was the whole Shadal Shadal Burning Abyss and Satellar Knight format and all that like three trifecta and these uh the really great artwork and just some really killer fusions obviously like Construct and, and Wendy are just ridiculous but uh, we can already see, you know, these are just continuing to trickle up in value. I mean, I mean, apparently the first edition copies or decks are already going for about three bones plus, you know, which is an incredible um, price increase. Uh, seeing that there were only you no know, ten bones on release, and this was this is not that old. I mean, this was what it was twenty twenty. This was a last year release. So, um, incredible. Um, what I want to talk about specifically specifically about this, now, this is the only way you can get Wendy. Wendy is a solo print here, so that's kind of like the, the, the dead giveaway, uh, specifically besides investing in the sealed uh, first edition copies uh, for collectability purposes of the actual sealed structure decks. But if you have, if you're going to go for, for card singles specifically, um, of course, Ariel is a solo print as well. But Construct and uh, Wendy are alternative um, artworks and they look fantastic these are actually really good usually I really just despise alternative art they come out really really terrible and always like way less uh, cool looking than the original prints but these actually were done very very well and I like these a lot and these are the only ways that you can get the alternative prints of of these two cards unfortunately they were super and ultra but I mean that's just kind of the way it is there you don't really find a lot of secrets um, if not ever, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I can't remember. I mean, there's there had to have been some star deck or structure deck or something that had some secrets, but I can't really, off the top of my mind, think of any that had secrets. It mostly caps out ultra rares, so it kind of is what it is. These are very very affordable, so I highly recommend buying these in bulk. These are just insane affordable, affordable. And then of course you know sold prints with these supers, and then it's just an amazing product to hold sealed. Personally, I I bought several cases cases of that personally myself. Next is going to be the Transmigration policy, Prophecy, Ultimate Rare Strike and Neos. This is going for some pretty dumb numbers right now. I'm going to go ahead and look at uh, first editions. Even uh, heavily played like 15 bones. It's insane. No one's really using this card, at least that I'm aware of. I'm not really sure. I think this is just a really, really badass looking Ultimate Rare, old school Ultimate Rare. And it's just finally seeing kind of like the light of day here. So starting market price is around 33 bones for lightly played first edition Ultimate Rare copies. And then if you want near mint, it goes up to 43 bones a piece. Only two pages of availability. And then if we switch over to three stacks, there's non-existent. So there is that. Next is going to be the Dark Creator, Phantom Darkness. Really great artwork, really great rarity, really cool effect. Darks and lights have an abundance of support, and you can just run a whole bunch of uh, different things here. We're going to be looking at some stacks. Starting stack, lightly played first edition, is going to be about 47 bones plus a shipping of about um, 1.5. And then for near mint, it's going to go to 115. Definitely a significant increase for the condition change. We're going to take off the stacks. And first first edition is going to be roughly around the same. It's the same variant here, 47 plus. And then there is a near mint here for around 40, 54. And there's a German European one for 55. It's pretty cool. And two pages availability. So really great stuff on that. Of course, you got to see the other side of the mirror here. We have the creator, Rise of Destiny. This is a really, really special set to me because, in my personal opinion, white Mexican theory, this was what I consider, like me specifically, the last generation one set my personal opinion mostly because this was one of the or the last set 
that was dropped before I stopped playing as a kid. And this is also the 13th core uh, core booster set in the, in the original Gen 1 lineup. And this is the poster boy. This was the card in the back with Yami Yugi on the booster pack packaging. And, of course, it came out in this amazing rarity of Ultimate Rare. And, of course, there's also uh, standard Ultra Rares. But no one really talks about that because those are ugly and disgusting. But these Ultimate Rares are going for some pretty good uh, market price here. So Spanish, lightly played first edition is around 35 bones. And then um, there's the first English prints are about 43 for lightly played. And then if you want near mint, three pages of availability here. Near Mint is going to go for 131 bones for first edition. Let's see if there is any bulk pricing. It doesn't look like there's even bulk pricing. There's no options for me to switch to three stacks. So that's going to be pretty much as good as it gets. Very, very aesthetically pleasing. Really, really high collectability behind this card. And a really great artwork. Pretty cool effect, too. Of course, there was, interesting enough, Elemental Energy Special Edition promos, which was cool. Don secret rare variants of this. Normally, promos in these special editions are supers they happen to select secret rares for this set back in that time and uh, th I would not discredit this it's still very much a secret rare not a lot of people discredit because you know it's a special edition promo mass production all that stuff inflation but this is very very you know I love this car I love this artwork and even though it's not uh, the original ultimate rares first editions it is still very much a secret rare, and it looks very very nice in my personal opinion and it's going for pretty good money here I mean stack start and near mint for five bones a piece and there's a couple of stacks available and then if we take off stacks it's gonna be you know about two bones for lightly plates and then there's some near mints here as well four pages availability so that's a definitely a healthy alternative next is gonna be Kaiba man it's kind of an obscure card. I feel like a lot of people don't really talk or know about this card. A really cool artwork, though. Of course, leading the front, we have the Dark Revelations 4 Secret Rares. And uh, I love cardboard on cardboard artwork. So, of course, we got the Yu-Gi-Oh card here, and he's got the Blue Eyes White Dragon helmet mask, which is pretty cool. And, of course, this is just going for some ridiculous numbers. I mean, there's only three listings here, starting market price. I'm surprised this isn't more. I'm surprised that, oh, this is heavily played. Never mind. They played 73 bones. Near mint, 150 bones, 149 roughly. There's just a not obscene amount of uh, quantities of these Dark Rev cards. So I think it's kind of one thing that, that really drives a lot of collectors to or a certain sector of collectors to dark revelations i personally don't really i'm not a big fan of them. i think they're a low rarity for high dollar but i do see how the numbers are just like crazily dwindling so there's that and then there is the super rare variants of uh world championship 2005 kind of going back to like these 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 uh game boy advance game promos in the early 2000s really really cool this one happened to be the uh, super rare variant, not not prismatic secret rare, but still really cool. And let's go ahead and look at some market prices for this. And um, it looks like it's going to be roughly around three bones, free factor and shipping for lightly played. And then near mint's going to go for about four. If you switch over to bolt pricing for stacks, it's going to go to nine bones and then ten bones for two, three stacks. So, um, pretty sure that's it. That would really be it. I mean, there is the Legendary Collections Kaiba, which is like a, a whole nother box of surprises that I would love to just spend time on talking. I'm a huge Advent fan of Legendary Collections sets. They had some really ridiculous, uh, cards. Um, but for what it is, um, I, I would personally prefer this one because it is a game promo and an old game promo even though this one's significantly more affordable and it's higher rarity. I wouldn't discredit this just because it's so affordable. The only thing that kind of gets me is that is that's ultra rare, but then it kind of gets, like, its its blood kind of gets covered by the set because it has the label of Legendary Collection Kaiba and, you know, the first edition stamps, which is really going to hold off very well. Before I forget, there is, of course, the very infamous Retro Pack 1 Secret Rares, which even are toppling over the Secret Rares of the Dark Rev 4s. There's a single copy, copy here for Lightly Played for 383 bones, which is incredible. Next is going to be some Dark World stuff. So I'm an avid Dark World fanboy. I love Dark World. Another very splashable engine. I think there's a lot of Dark decks. A really cool engine that you can mix this in with. And first is going to be Snow. This is going to be the infamous Legendary Collection for Secret Rare Variants. 
And starting market price for this is going to be roughly around three bones for you factor in shipping for single stacks. And then if you want near mints, I'm going to go to the second page. And these have gone up quite a bit now. They're about seven bones when you factor in this 99 cent shipping. It happens to be a three stack as well. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to three stacks and see what the bulk prices are. So about seven bones, seven bones across the board for lightly played and roughly around the same price for near mint and there's only four listings of that now this is by far the highest rarity and you know aesthetic most aesthetically pleasing but i would not discredit the original super rares from structure deck gave Under underworld this was by far my favorite structure deck of all time this is like this came out in in 2011 um, right right after i graduated high school right when i got back into the game like really really you know big back into the game and these are just really affordable. I mean, well, these are just, we're going to go ahead and switch over to, and they're the original prints. So even though they're not as pretty as the Secret Rares, First Editions exclusively, they're like uh, they're like two bones pretty much all across the board. There's a five stack here, lightly played First Editions for two bones. And then, you know, um, well, let me just do this, switch over, it looks like there's seven listings. Yeah, so pretty much two bones here, and then your mints go to not even three bones a piece. So uh, this has amazing artwork. It's an amazing effect. You can search out any Dark World card with this, which is really, really great. And again, this just has really great artwork, and this is the original print. This is very old now, and I still think to the day it's really amazing that this only has two variants. So that brings uh, a lot of great value to this card. Next is going to be Brow, original Ultima Prince, Elemental Energy. Now, of course, there is Secret Rare Variants as well from Legendary Collections 4, which I'm going to get into here shortly. And it looks like for stacks, there's only a single listing of three. It starts at 60 bones for lightly played. If we take off the stacks, we're going to get some European Germans. Lightly played first edition for 28. First edition English lightly played is going to be 43. And then first edition your mint English is going to be 70 bones. So this is definitely seeing some uh, some fine crown jewel pricing here. Next is going to be the secret rare variant. Starting market price for starting market price for stacks is going to be six bones for near mint for a three stack here. If we take off the stacks, looks like it's about five bones roughly for our near mint first. And it's about three pages availability. So just a great, awesome draw power card for Dark Worlds. And then, of course, the last and final card we have is going to be Grafa. Now, I can't express more disappointment for uh, the reprints of this card. I mean, we got two gold rares, a, a terribly disgusting gold rare, and then a pretty awful gold rare here. Um, this is a really good set, though. I love this set. The ghost gold hybrids are insane. And this this terrible like wannabe like makeshift common gold lettering just garbage. It, it's just been utterly awful. I'm still waiting for the day that we get a secret rare or ultimate rare variant. I know it's kind of um wishful thinking. So naturally, the original first editions, even though they are ultra rares, I mean you you know it is what it is. Uh, structure decks have ultra rares in them. That's a thing. So we got what we we work with what we have. And this is still, you know, relatively, uh, still, yeah, I mean, very, very affordable. I mean, we can see there's a, sti a six stack here for not even two bones for near first edition. Then it goes to almost about three after that for the stacks, specifically in two pages of availability. So not a crazy in abundance. This is an insanely old card. Amazing artwork. I, I really, really love this artwork. And uh, this is just an all-around amazing card. And Dark Worlds is just, you know, I'm, I'm a big Dark World fan, so it might be a well, there is totally a little bit of bias in that. So That is all I have for you guys tonight. Thank you so much for watching these videos. Yu-Gi-Oh! has been part of my life for s several years now. It's one of my greatest passions. I really love the brotherhood, the dueling, the creativity, the deck building, the investments. There's so many amazing things that this hobby can bring to the table. I apologize. It's been taking me several weeks to make this video. Um, I'm here in Syracuse, New York, and we just started our, our semester up, so it's just been insane for classes and ROTC and all this this craziness, so I've just been trying to learn how to manage my time better. The link below is going to be to my Facebook. Any of you guys can message me, add me. 
I would love to talk to you guys about anything Yu-Gi-Oh related. And loneliness is a real thing. Please love each other. Be friends to each other. Take care of each other. The world's a crazy place, and there's a lot of... You never know. You never know what's going on, you know, underneath someone's surface. So just please be respectful and polite and take care of each other out there. This has been a showcasing by The White Mexican, and I will see you in the next video.